I'm so glad you clicked on this video. Before you leave, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to see your mug every time I upload. Hey guys, I have three meals today that require three ingredients, three food ingredients, and then some spices or condiments. So I'm gonna go over each of the meals be for each of the meals. So this first one, I am gonna make some sour cream and onion grits. I love grits, so if this isn't for you, go ahead and click to the next meal idea. I do have two more, and you might like one of those, but I, I think this is gonna be a good flavor with it. I don't know, grits go good with a lot of things, so we'll see. We got grits, sour cream, we're gonna use part of an onion, and then I think to give it a real good onion flavor, some minced onion and some onion powder. So let's get to cooking. All right, my friends, I have one fourth cup grits. I'm gonna pour that bad boy right on in there. And then one cup of water, and just so you know, that is one serving of grits. To that, I'm going to add in some minced onion. Really, you can add as much of this as you want. If you don't have it, you can leave it out. I think the um, onion powder is gonna give it a nice onion flavor, but I'm just kind of really, you know, covering all my bases here. So just so these can get tender, I'm gonna put some of those in there. And I honestly really love the flavor of uh, minced onion. I don't know, I grew up on it. I've always put that stuff in my, my ramen too. <laughs> just loved it. And then of course, a little bit of onion powder. Did I mention how easy this is gonna be? Your life's gonna be simpler now that you clicked on this video. <laughs> I kid. Seriously though, uh, we're gonna turn this on. We're going to boil it and let it simmer and thicken up and become, well, grits. <laughs> so we're gonna let that go. And while those grits are uh, a gritsin, I make up things here on this channel, guys. I'm just trying to have a little fun. <laughs> Give you a little entertainment while you watch this video. I mean, come on. That's what life's about. Let's try to have some fun here. So I thought that some onions crisped up would be really good on top of this. It'll kind of add to the onion flavor of the sour cream and onion. And who doesn't like some crispy onions on tops of things, right? So... I'm gonna use probably, yeah, maybe a little bit more than one fourth of a onion. So I'm just gonna chop that up into basically little pieces. I guess you would call that dicing. All right, so to crisp these onions up nice and crispy-like, I have my pan and I put about a tablespoon of oil in there. And then of course to that, just add your chopped diced onions. And I'm gonna let this sit here for about five minutes. We'll check in at that time. All right, so the grits are done. They smell very much like an onion. I'm gonna give it a taste. I think I'm probably gonna need to put some salt in here. Yep, definitely has got an onion flavor and it definitely needs salt. You can use regular table salt if you want, or you can add some onion salt. It'll kind of just continue to build up that onion flavor. Either one will work. Onion salt is one of my favorite seasonings also. Onion salt and minced onion. All right, once you have that salted to taste, just remove it from the heat and let it sit here just to kind of cool down a little bit and then just wait for the onions to finish. All right, that is the onions at about five minutes. And I do have my heat set at a five. That's about a medium on my stove top. I do think I'm going to let these go for another five minutes or so. I want them to be pretty crispy. All right, and that is 10 minutes. They're nice and crispy. There's a few that still are got a little bit of white to them, but overall they have a nice little crispy crunchy outside. All right, now that my grits have cooled just a little bit, I'm going to add in some sour cream going to add in about a tablespoon. Of course, you can adjust this to as much or as little as you would like. Also, if you have chives or you have Parmesan, I think either one of those would be good in here. I'm not going to be adding those, 
but those are would probably be nice additions and I'll I'll give it a taste in a minute and uh, kind of give it my opinion at the same time. Okay, that looks pretty creamy, so I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I'm going to plate my nice and oniony grits. And of course, to the top of that, I'm gonna add on my crispy, crunchy onions. All right, there she is in all of her plated glory. Nothing else to do but give it a try. Here we go. Boy, oh boy. If you like the taste of onion, you're gonna like this. It kind of reminds me of the French onion packets you get, like the French onion soup packets, that's what it is. It has a very similar taste to that. I do think I need a little pinch of salt on the top and maybe just a dash more of sour cream. It is really good. I, I thought it would come out tasting all right. It does taste a lot better than I thought it was going to. Those crispy onions on top, they really are a delicious addition to this. Guys, you gotta try this. I mean, I, I'm actually blown away by how simple it is, but still so tasty. I think I'm gonna make some Bombay potatoes. These are the ingredients that you'll need for it. I'm gonna be using um, some oil and then some spices, a potato, a tomato, and one fourth of an onion. For the spices, I'm gonna use some fresh garlic. You can use powdered garlic if you want to, or even garlic salt. Some curry, some turmeric, some salt and pepper. These are just grinders I need to use up this. This has actually got a couple of other spices in it, but mainly it's just salt left. And then this is pepper, but it also has coriander in it. You can use that in this if you want to. Um, I would recommend using it. And then some cumin. And that's all you'll need for this. I do want to parboil my potato. So I have washed it and I'm gonna cut it up just to kind of speed up the process. You can just boil this whole if you want to. Also, you can take the skins off if you want to. I like the skins in, in most dishes with potatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave them on. And I'm gonna cut them into relatively larger size pieces. That way they don't like break down in the water. Let's get these potatoes in my hot water and I'm gonna cook these for about 10 minutes. Also, I am going to remove the skins from my tomatoes. You can leave them on if you want to. I just don't usually like them on. It really depends on the dish, but more, more times than not, I will remove the skins. So to um, not dirty up anything additional, I am gonna put this in the pot of potatoes and it's just coming to a boil. So I'm gonna put this in here and keep turning it for about a minute or so until the skins peel back and then I'll just remove the skins and chop this into small-ish bite-sized pieces. All right, out of the pot and into the frying pan. I did save a little bit of the water because I'm gonna use it in this dish. I think some of these I am going to chop down to half size. All right, I think I'm gonna fry these up for about up to five minutes and then we'll give them an old look-ski and see what they look like. See if they're crispy enough and then we'll add some more stuff to it. I do wanna add in my one fourth of an onion so that it can start to cook and soften up a bit. And I also put about a tablespoon of oil in here. I don't think I showed that, but I did put that in there. All right, I cooked them um, a little bit longer than five minutes. It was probably about seven minutes or so. Just kind of wanted to start to get a crisp shell on the outside of the potatoes just a little bit and to soften up the onions. I'm gonna add in my tomatoes. Basically, I want the tomatoes to start to cook down just a little bit and to release some of the juices to become a little bit softer. And I don't want them to like just be a sauce for the uh, potatoes. All right, I am gonna start adding in my spices. So a little bit of curry and I'm just eyeballing this. So you kind of have to season to taste, but if I had to give a measurement amount, I would probably say about one fourth of a teaspoon of curry. 
I got some turmeric, again, probably about one fourth of a teaspoon. Some pepper and coriander. Just a couple of grinds of that. It's probably less than one fourth of a teaspoon, but I'm gonna use about one large clove of garlic. Make a little space for the garlic. Give that garlic a little saute. You can add a little splash of water in there to help move the garlic around. This will help it become more fragrant, move it around the pan a little bit so that it all gets nice and seared up. Release those delicious flavors. Turn down my heat just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of water. I would say that was probably about a half a cup or so. You can add as much as you want to in there. I'm just trying to give a little moisture back to everything, get those seasonings mixed around, and hopefully start to help break down the potatoes and the tomatoes a little bit. You could always give it a little smash too if you want to uh, kind of mash the potatoes just a little bit. I kind of like that um, that taste when a potato starts to break down into the sauce. I don't know, it kind of gives it a nice rich flavor. I added about another half a cup of water from the potato water and I cooked it for about five minutes on a medium low and now I'm ready to plate this. And this is my version of Bombay potatoes. You could also serve this with some white rice on the side if you want to. All right, this house smells delicious by the way. Okay, so let's give a bite of this, my version of Bombay potatoes. I like how soft the potato is, but it's not like complete mush, but it did start to break down a little bit. And the tomatoes, this was like a really, unripened tomato. So it still has a very nice fresh taste. They broke down just a little bit, but honestly not as much as I thought that they were going to. These spices really do have a nice cohesive blend to them. And I just love those onions with the curry flavor. Overall, this is a pretty much a success, I think. I think all the flavors work really nice together. Okay, for this last three ingredient meal, we're gonna have some potato, onions, and some rice. And then I have some spices over here. I am gonna be using about one fourth of a chicken bouillon cube, some salt, pepper, some onion powder. You don't have to use that if you're gonna actually use fresh onion or vice versa. And then some garlic powder. So that is it. This is one of the easiest simplest and most delicious budget meals you can make with limited ingredients and as long as you got some spices you can really give this dish a lot of flavor. All right so I'm gonna get my rice cooking. You actually don't need a lot of rice for this because you're gonna have the tomatoes and the onions in here also. So I'm gonna start with a half a cup of water and this is actually two tablespoons of rice. Just gonna add that in here, bring it to a boil, cover it, and yeah, I'm gonna let it cook until it's tender. It doesn't look like a lot of rice, but it really does plump up to be quite a bit. And I almost forgot, you will need to put your chicken broth, or if you're using beef or vegetable, whatever you wanna use, chicken I just think tastes the best in here. You want to get that in the water and get it melted and cook it with the rice. That way the rice takes on the flavor of the chicken or whatever flavoring you're using. All right, while the rice is a cooking, we're gonna cook the rest of the stuff. So you'll need either some butter or some oil for your pan. And just add in your onions and your one tomato chopped. This tomato is huge, by the way. I did blanch my tomato. Um, it's just a personal preference again. And this is like one of the easiest dinners you could possibly do. You're tired, you come home from work and you don't want to cook or you know you want it to be a minimal cooking experience in the kitchen this is definitely one of my go-to's we want those tomatoes to break down so it's okay that they're in there with the onions the onions will get soft and then the tomatoes will also break down just putting in some onion powder 
I really like a nice robust onion taste and then some garlic and a little bit of pepper or a lot of it whatever you like a bit I will check back in in five minutes it's been about five minutes and I did put a little bit of water in here the tomatoes are just not ripe enough so it's not releasing any juices or enough to make a little sauce base that I was looking for so I just added a little bit of water my rice is just at done I put a little too much water in at this time which is fine because I'm gonna put it in this uh, pan with the tomatoes so there's a little bit of rice liquid left I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in there also it's a nice starchy base so it'll be good for the overall dish I'm gonna mix this up and I'm gonna let it simmer here for a minute or two and that will be all that there is to this dish <laughs> told you it was easy now of course you can add all kinds of things in here if you want to you know other vegetables that you want to add in here maybe you have frozen vegetables you don't want to use tomatoes rice is a great base for a dish and then of course adding in the chicken beef or vegetable flavoring really does enhance the dish or brings out a lot of good flavors in the rice all right my friends that is it just gonna go plate it and then I'll give it a taste all right it looks delicious now if it was just me and I wasn't doing a video to make it a little more budget friendly I didn't add this ingredient but you can add a can of chicken or any kind of chicken that you find on sale just shred it up and put it in here mm, so good I think what I like most about this dish is that very subtle chicken flavor and also there's juice left in this so it's not just like eating a bowl of dry rice it just gives it a nice little flavor to it the onions still have a bit of crunch left to them I didn't cook them all the way through I really like that I wish the tomato hadn't been so um, unripe I should have left it out on the counter for a couple of days I tend to buy mine a little bit more on the unripe side that way when I get around to eating it it's like the perfect uh, ripeness but that didn't work out this time all right guys that is three budget meals using three ingredients plus spices I hope you enjoy these ideas build on them you know make them your own tweak them make them you um, I really enjoyed the sour cream and onion grits the best and then I would say I like this better than my version of Bombay potatoes but they were all really good for what they were and honestly they were super cheap and you could make all three of these meals for less than like 70 cents a serving so I hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for watching and happy eating my friends